You know, I really wasn't planning on doing a second video on the transmission reseal, but I did find enough interesting things when I pull the seals on this transmission that I thought I should show them to you. So let's move in close and I'm going to show you specifically some of the problems I found when I opened up this transmission. When I loosened the rear lock nut and removed the rear drive coupling, I was very pleased to find that there was no adverse wear in the splines. At the same time I checked uh, these holes that attach to the flex disc for any wear or elongation. This can be a problem if you've been running with loose bolts. So be sure and check these holes for outer roundness. Um, so that was okay. Then I took a look at the rear seal and this is when I went, oh my word, look at this thing. I've seen bad rear seals before, but this one was so hard, it had absolutely no flex in the rubber. You could just take the pieces and break off just like that. So it was a good thing that I made the decision to replace the rear seal when the transmission was out of the car. Much easier to do it out of the car than in the car. Then we removed the front section of the transmission and removed the pump and look what I found with this o-ring. In the previous video I talked about the o-rings hardening with age but this this one is extreme. It's so hard it just breaks <laughs> in pieces like that. If you look at a new o-ring look at how flexible that is. So it was obvious that this o-ring had kind of squared up, hardened, and the transmission fluid was flowing right through it. Next thing I did was remove the front seal and that did look okay, uh, still very flexible. No evidence of any wear on this lip, but of course I am going to replace the front seal also. In this shot I can show you the front center section that we removed yesterday. I completely disassembled this unit, cleaned it, and installed the new O-ring right here inside the transmission pump housing. So this is ready to go back in. Once again, I want to mention cleanliness. It's very important that you work on clean work surfaces and keep these transmission parts completely clean. If you get any dirt inside that transmission, it can cause a malfunction very quickly. So think cleanliness when you're working on these transmissions. You can look here. I've, I've sealed this up with uh, lint-free towels just to make sure that I'm not getting any dirt inside here. And then I've gone ahead and completely clean this gasket surface. We're going to be installing the new gasket you can see here and I'm going to use Aviation Permatex. That's, that's one of my favorite sealants. I recommend you do not use silicone or RTV. If you get too much on this gasket and it squeezes off and gets inside the transmission, guess what? You're going to have transmission valve body shift problems. On the back end I'm going to install the rear seal and I've, I've created a, a kind of a special tool to put these front and rear shaft seals in. So let me show you that in more detail. I'm not quite ready to install the front or the rear seal yet, but I thought I would at least show you uh, my approach to getting this seal in properly. Um, I will set this in place like this and then using this special uh, insertion tool that I have made, I can put it right over the end of this output shaft and get it on the outer lip and drive this seal in perfectly straight. This tool can also be used for the front seal and at this point I think I'll go ahead and, and provide these in the kits that I will be selling on my website. Cheers, I hope you're having as much fun as I am. In conclusion, there's a couple things I need to mention about the kit itself. Uh, the reseal kit does not tell you how to take the transmission out, but it does have detailed step-by-step -step instructions on how to get that transmission apart and get those front seals replace. It does not cover the rear seal, just the front seal section of the transmission. As you note here, every step has a picture so you can follow through on the instructions step by step quite easily. You'll need a couple tools that are also not included in the kit. This first one that we sell is a special wobble attachment for half inch drive with a heavy duty 10 millimeter hex socket this is the one you'll need to get those starter bolts out and they can really be a pain to get out when you're removing the transmission. You can also pull the hex socket off and use a standard half inch drive 17 millimeter socket 
to get up on top the transmission to get those bolts out uh, that are very difficult to get to. So the wobble extension is a must to get these transmissions in and out easily. And then of course you'll also need a seal removal tool as shown here. These are re readily available in most uh, parts stores, but for convenience if you need one we also carry these on our website. And I mentioned in the previous video about the flex discs, and so I've acquired the new flex disc. You can really tell the difference when you put these side by side, particularly in the amount of swelling and cracking on this old one as compared to the new flex disc. And before I put the transmission back together and back in, I decided, you know, there's one more thing I should really do on this car before that transmission goes back up in and there's bolted to the back of the engine. And I thought, you know, if I don't do this, I'm going to regret it. Does anybody want to guess what that is? Well, here it is. This is the rear crank seal located on the 60X engines. And if you're fortunate enough to have one of these later model diesels, you actually can replace the rear seal. And look what I found when I went in there and pulled this old seal out. This is a little more involved procedure, so I'm going to cover this in a separate video.